Hello folks, this is G-Man here, G-Home and Custom Lures. Tonight I'm going to share with you uh, several different videos. This will be my first of my recordings for my new channel on YouTube. You can subscribe to it, look, to, look for my link on my Facebook page on my timeline. i uh kind of excited to get <clears throat> some of my new baits from one of my sponsors, uh, Buster's Baits. One of the many fine pourers out there on all of Facebook, if not one of the best. And uh, I've used his baits now almost three years. And I just got a new order in from him. We got here the uh, his new pattern called the uh, Copper Top in the crawfish pattern. And also anywhere in the country, as you know green pumpkin as well as green pumpkin four inch uh, drop shot worm lovely on action and uh, the uh, five inch stick worm comparable to a senko no difference really once you fish them you'll find out okay I'm going to uh, be a little technique specific here not as much I'm going to do more in the future here to be a little more specific for you, but uh, I'm uh, going to show you <clears throat> just some of the ways and how I like to rig these baits. And uh, I'm going to start out tonight with a few different techniques, but for this video tonight, right now, for the first one, I'm going to film different ways of running the uh, Senko worm or the As Busters is, is patent name. This, the stick worm. So I'm going to start out here and uh, show you a couple different ways I like to run the, the stick worm. I get these weights here and this will save you a lot of a lot of worms people. I mean I can get probably five six bass out of one worm versus maybe one or two. The conventional way of just running the hook through the worm. So I get these weighted hooks. They come with a hook and a weight in different weights. And if you want to run it weightless, slower fall, cooler water, slower presentations, you do so. If the water is in the 70s and the bass are a little more aggressive, then you would go with a little faster retrieve and a little more snap on the action. So. I got a request already tonight from a fellow named Pito, one of my friends on Facebook, and he's like, teach me the damn Senko. So, here we go. This is one of the ways I like to rig it. Okay, this, this is for the bass that's a little more aggressive in the warmer water. So, it'll, it'll be a fast fall, and as it falls, you can twitch it, semi-slack line. You can hold it up, suspend it. Depending on where the bait fish are in the in the thermocline, you know, you might want to just leave it there. And but all in all, these baits are specifically uh, location specific. Sp specific, I mean, excuse me, like ledges, drop offs, just like a jig. And they can. Be, this one is not weedless, but as you can see, there's just different ways of running it. You can stick it in the bass's face, and the bass is right by it, and he won't touch it. You can just play with it, and after a while, you're going to make him mad, and he's going to nail it. <clears throat> or, like I said, a faster fall, more action, them bass are in warmer water, quicker reaction, and they're going to chase it down. That's all there is to it. But there's many ways of pulling on it, jerking it. Play with it, Pito play with it people many ways of doing this okay that's one way I like to do it and that's by the way that that would be more of a technique that you use on the outsides of of uh, cover for bass like uh, outer weed lines you know pre-spawn post-spawn uh, bass will be in heavy cover uh, just on the outside edges facing the food of course. Here's another way I like to rig it and this this way 
it's totally weedless. This is like one of Brett Ayler's top dog techniques that he just picked up. And uh, this is a weedless uh, hook, specifically targeted for these uh, Senko worms, stick bait, if you will, here. And uh, this you can drop it through the matted grasses. You know, if you got pockets in the matted grasses, perfect. Throw it right in there and just let her fall to the bottom. Same thing. Work your magic with it. Play with it, people. But this is this is totally weedless. I mean, Brett Ayler loves to throw this. He's just recently made a video on it you can find on YouTube. Okay. Here's another way I like to run them. You know, aggressive fish. Heavier fall. You know, cover a lot of water. Move with it. Just leave it there and shake it. You know, play with them. Let the fish tell you what they want. They will. You know, if you're going too slow, speed it up. If, if the water's warmer in the 70s, <clears throat> you know, speed it up. Create a reaction strike. You know, when that water's warm, them, them fish are reacting to just about anything. You know, but the thing about these is too is, is you just don't want to blob it in there and just splash on the water because you're going to spook every fish in the area. You want to get a good pitch technique going, you know. Get good at flipping. If they're aggressive, I can even skip these on the water and create the movement of a top water busting bait fish, which will create a, a chase down reaction strike from bass. So just play with them. And then here's Here's the uh, good old stick fish, or the good old drop shot. So I'm trying to rush here. I'm running a little low on time, but uh, I got to get a smaller tag in here on this. But the, this is my bullet weight weedless, or uh, my bullet weight for covering a lot of water fast drop shot. And I'll be a little more specific on my techniques here in the future videos. But this is the Buster Bates 4-inch uh, drop shot one. And then I had another one here, but I don't think I'm going to have any time on another drop shot. But again, the Sankos, you know, there's, 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 you can rig these things like, five, six, six different weights. Just let the bass tell you what they want and pay attention to the elements, the temperature, uh, what they're telling you. If they're, if they're striking short on baits, you know, you're going too fast. If they're striking, uh, they're swallowing them, basically, you're going too slow. So just pay attention to the mood of the fish and be Technique specific in, in all different ways until you find a pattern that works. You know. Like I said, I'll be a little more specific on all these baits. And uh, let you know how they go. Hopefully I can get a good 10 minutes out of this video. This is my first, so please bear with me. I'll be specific on this. I'm not big on big skirts on jigs. But this is the uh, copper top from Buster's Baits with the skirted football head jig. And uh, I'll do future videos just on jigs, just on worms. But I'm trying to cram a lot here in this 10 minutes. But this is the copper top from Buster's Baits, and it looks sweet. You know, on my, on my craw trailers, I don't like to run big skirts because they're on, they're on the bottom on them football heads they're you know do you see a bunch of crap around a crawfish when he's on the bottom it only takes as a master bait maker it only takes four or five uh, strands to, of crazy legs or rubber skirting to really get the attention of a bass and less is actually better at times in con different conditions you know when they're aggressive you can throw the bigger skirted ones but uh, and here's like a 3 8 ounce uh, Buster's Baits again. This is our green, his green pumpkin. And uh, I just love these Buster's Baits because the appendages on the claws are spread apart and they displace water great.
I mean, they 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 make a, to me personally wider wider spread out claws, more vibration in the water. And these things are soft. They're like semi. They're like the halfway point between a sweet beaver and a. And a Uh, in this <laughs> whatever you call it but uh all right I just wanted to play with the buster baits and give you a little idea on how I like to do a few things but videos coming up request videos and uh tell me what you want to see peace